to start like what everybody else did and just thank Candace for just doing what we did. And when you contacted me in 2006, Stacy had only passed away like a year ago. And so I was in like a fog and when she talked about her vision for the Myocarditis Foundation, just by talking to her, I knew that, that it was going to be like this. And I'm, my prayer is just that it's a lot more, that this room is like quadrupled in not five years, but next year. And, and the part about going on and um, just donating as much as you can, even, you know, your $10 a month, every little bit helps. And that's like really, really important with um, foundations like the myocarditis because everybody donates to the, to the American Heart Association. It's just like, well, let's just give all our money to this just big pool of wherever and let them decide. And, and I like to be in the decision-making role where it's like, I want to decide exactly where my, my money is going to go to for research. So I think that was really cool. Um, and then Sue is just amazing <laughs> doing the, um, the Facebook page where we have over 500 members. It's really sad to say that we have that many members, but again, it, it's, I'm thankful that we do because back in 2005 when Stacy passed away, I knew two people. And I, I found them through the internet, and I just randomly would somehow get their phone numbers, and I talked to one or two people, and that was it. So I didn't have any, like, any support. And now it's like I have friends and family, and I don't even talk to them about myocarditis because I talk to all you guys. And I read the page, and I see the symptoms of people that are survivors and how they're constantly going through and having to get sick, do I get a flu <coughs> shot, do I do this? And I sometimes I'm thankful that Stacy didn't survive because it's so difficult what all these survivors go through. So it's just it's such a roller coaster of grief as all you guys know. <laughs> um, so um, all right, so um, I really struggle with what to say. I've done a lot of speeches, but a lot of them have been Christian-based, and since we're all like from different religion backgrounds, I'm gonna not normally do my normal speech that I normally do, but when I was um, talking to everybody over the last 12 hours or 24 hours, I realized that we're all from different places. We all come from different states. We all come from different counties, different backgrounds, different religion backgrounds, different um, occupations, but we're all here for one reason, and that's to cure myocarditis, and that is to bring awareness. So we just don't have to have someone that just passes away, like within the last six months. I mean, that is the most heartbreaking thing, is to see that even a few months ago, someone passed away, and we just have to eliminate that, and it was like, in Australia, right? You know, one in Australia that just, so, I mean, it just, it's just not right, but listening to you guys talk about how difficult it is to diagnose it, and there's like 15 different myocarditis parts, I'm like, holy cow, no wonder, <laughs> you know, it's like finding a needle in a haystack, mm -hmm. so, and the only way to find that needle in a haystack is money. it's the only way to do it, and with budget cuts and funding cuts and things like that, Every, every little bit helps. Um, so, um, I talked all about that. Um, another thing is I'm really thankful for um, Facebook and the internet because that has allowed all of us to do that. And also YouTube, which is something I haven't really gotten into yet. But I think with YouTube, we can get into the social, the social media, like have your speech that you had here, which I thought was amazing, put that on YouTube and just start having myocarditis things and then we can link and get the awareness out because I think kids and people with phones now, that's all they're on, and if we could just reach out to that group, I think that would um, be amazing um, as far as finding, finding a cure. So I'm gonna tell you about Stacy. Um, let me go to her website. We have a nonprofit organization in memory of Stacy that we established, and that's the only reason that I have made it 
through where I am today is because of of her um, of her nonprofit. Um, Stacy was um, a cheerleader at Timber Creek High School and here in Orlando on the east side of town. There was 4,000 students in the school and she was a cheerleader and she had back issues um, just for five or six, seven months. So I wouldn't stop. I'm like, we're going here, we're going here, we're going there. So we went everywhere. And she had MRIs done. She had... Um, x-rays of her but everything was focused on her back and this was nine months prior to her passing away and so we um we went there in january to get all the x-rays done they said come back in a few months so we went back in march we actually went back four days before she died we went to um, the jewett clinic and that's a well-known clinic here in in the central florida area and they um, said they wanted to see her back. And I'm like, well, she's just really tired. And they're like, well, you'll have to go see your regular doctor for that because we don't think anything with her back has to do with her being tired. And we had also a week earlier gotten a puppy, Gizmo. And we had taken, um, we had taken him to uh, the vet and she was real, real tired. And uh, we went in and saw Dr. Adderman and he did a series of blood work, it was like two weeks before. And then we went in and saw him and she had a rash on the back of her hand to the point where it was bleeding. And this was a week before and I didn't, I was out of town so I didn't realize that the rash was that bad. Well, when we got to the doctor's office, the rash wasn't that bad anymore, it wasn't bleeding. And so he's examining her and I, I told her about him about the rash and he's like, well, you know that's probably just a skin infection we'll get to that and he just did his normal let's get blood work and let's do this and stuff well then um thursday we went to the the walking or thursday we went to um, the jewett clinic and when i went to pick her up to school to take her to the jewett clinic she had to walk across campus and she told me mom i feel like i just ran an 880 and she didn't say mom i my chest hurt, I had chest pains, because then I would have known. But she's like, I just, oh, I'm like, well, of course you feel like you just ran to 880. You got up at 5.30 this morning, you had your Bible study, you cheerily, you do all this, no wonder you're tired. You know, and I said, so hopefully we'll find what's wrong with you. And then so on, um, on Friday morning, she went to school and the school called me and said that she was having, she was um, hyperventilating and she drove, so she, she was 16, 16, so she had a car. So I'm like, well, if she feels good enough, have her drive home, otherwise I'll come get her. Well, I found out later that someone had to help her to her car, and she drove home. Thank God it was only like a mile and a half or two miles through the neighborhood. But I mean, that was a prime right there. And But she didn't find that out until afterwards. And then, so she told me that she had to wait to wake her up in an hour because she had a test so she wanted to take the test and I'm like okay honey and then um, she stayed home all day and sat Friday night she came um, a friend of hers came over because she started feeling better and they went to go out and she started getting that wave again of not feeling right and so that's when they um, her friend came over and we're like you have like some sort of virus we don't want to get near you so we like quarantined her and i said just kind of we don't want to get sick because kevin was 12 and we, you know when you have a stomach virus that is the most i don't know contagious type thing ever i mean everybody that has a stomach virus you if you're even like five feet from them you get it and then so on saturday um she woke up she was feeling better and we went to, um, she wanted to have a wedding that she wanted to go to, so we went, took her to a wedding. And she was telling me random things like her eye sockets were hurting and her ankles were hurting. And um, she had a ringworm on her arm. So it was just various things. And now I realized that it was heart failure and because she had vomiting and diarrhea. And then so I called Dr. Adderman on Saturday and he said, well, you know, maybe you should take her to the emergency room because it sounds like something is 
wrong. So instead of the emergency room, we went to a walk-in clinic. It was about four o'clock, we went to the walk-in clinic, and the walk-in clinic, they were trying to get her blood pressure. And it was, it was hard to get. They had a couple different people trying to get her blood pressure. Finally, they got her blood pressure, and there was a, not a confrontation, but a discussion between the doctor and the person that got the blood pressure. And they said, well, we've got the reading, and well, do you have it or don't you? And mother intuition, I just, I was like, ooh. But I didn't act on it. And so then I said, well, you know, it's just a stomach virus. And, and they gave her a shot, and we went home. And Sunday morning, she woke up. She said, Mom, I can't feel my fingers and my toes. Because she called me because she was upstairs and we had the intercom thing. And I had to come up and get her and physically walk her. And she said, Mom, call someone. I'm like, oh, no, honey, you're fine. Because she did not look sick. She looked like, you know, she just was pale and, and with a virus, you know, a sickness. And we, I, I drove her to the emergency room. As I was parking the car, they wheeled her back, and I, I brought her into the wheelchair, and as I was parking the car, she quit breathing. And then, um, then they, we tried to find the quiet room, and it turned out that um, she had quit breathing, but they brought her back. And then when I walked back there, she had quit breathing again. And no one told us, like, anything that how severe it was and I think that was the, the big cure because or the big problem was because nobody knew in the, in the hospital what it was and Dr. Adderman did show up and then they tried to revive her for 45 minutes to an hour and a half and she never came back but they knew right up after as soon as she died they said we suspect myocarditis viral myocarditis and they um, never asked me if we wanted to donate our organs, and so I know we've talked a lot, but nobody's talked about donating organs, being an organ donor, and I don't know if they didn't, I think they just forgot to ask me, and so that's another thing I think would be good to find out with research is can we donate organs if you have it, and, or shouldn't they, or something like that, that might be. Um, so what we've done, um, since Stacy passed away, is um, I started a website, and what I did is this is a page in her journal because um, she got up and journaled um, every day at 5:30 in the morning. She was rebaptized. She was uh, accepted Christ when she was 15 and rebaptized when she was 16, and so um, she would journal and. Um, we created a web page like a journal, so every tab talks about the different phases of her life. And um, the myocarditis page is where this, and this was a long time ago, like this was like six years ago, I've updated the page in a while. But when Candace called me, I, all I knew what to do at that time was put her information on the page. And, um, she wrote a book too, right? And so um, this is where I think a lot of people in this room found Candace. And um, it's just to me an act of God that that happened that way. Because I just think that he is using Stacy in such a unique way because she prayed for a unique ministry. And I think outside of Christianity, I think a ministry could be anything. And I think this is a ministry. So, and it's a unique one. <laughs> so, I mean, like, it's just, it's just unbelievable how, how um, her story is being used. Um, 